Age of Empires 2 is a defining game for me, it being one of the few games I've played nearly every year since its release, almost 25 years ago, on September 27th, 1999. I can still vividly recall when I was introduced to it by my neighbor in their cramped, wood-paneled, white-monitored basement computer room. I even have the original spare disc he let me borrow, placed in the same unlabeled CD case, with the game key written in pencil taped to the cover. Since its bombastic explosion onto the gaming scene, selling over 2 million copies in just the first three months, in a year that also saw PC gaming classics released like System Shock 2 and EverQuest, Age of Empires 2 set the gold standard for medieval RTS gaming that has, if I'm being honest, never been topped. It is a game so lastingly popular, it has seen itself reiterated three separate times to include an HD remaster in 2013 and a full-blown definitive edition remake in 2019, each expanding the game's already impressive civilization, map, and campaign rosters, as well as balancing the game for the highly competitive and increasingly popular multiplayer scene. Today, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, the most played iteration by far, boasts on top of updated graphics, music, and a popular console release, 45 different civilizations ranging from originals like the Celts and Teutons to new faces like the Bohemians and Incas, over 40 campaigns ranging from the 4th to 16th century that include battle scenarios and challenges as specific characters throughout history, such as El Cid or Jan Zizka. You also get these wonderful narrated campaign screens to explain some of the historical background of your current faction and your character, which I've always loved and I loved it ever since I was a little kid. And this is all, of course, without reference the wildly popular multiplayer again, which for a 25 year old game boasts an active community of several thousand players a day, according to Steam charts, and has an active professional tournament scene as well. A feat that is nothing short of remarkable for a game this old, but then again, this is a truly remarkable game. Still, I recognize that although to me and likely many others watching this, this is a game that is familiar and close to our hearts, yet I should at the very least explain what Age of Empires 2 is and how it operates on a basic level to give you a taste of what it has to offer so that if you are new to it, you can feel comfortable enough giving it a try and having a new lifelong obsession. Firstly, Age of Empires 2 is a real-time strategy game, a genre defined primarily by the actions of the player and their respective civilizations being performed in, well, you guessed it, real time. From the allocation of resources, building structures, researching upgrades, and commanding your armies, it's all done live and without pause. In a standard game called a skirmish, you play as one of these 45 aforementioned civilizations, either pre-selected or at random, depending on how you prefer to play, each with their own skill level, bonuses, unique abilities, and units. If you're playing solo, then the difficulty and various other parameters can be set before the game starts, such as how big the map is, how many enemies you'll face, and so on. You can also play in co-op skirmishes, scenarios, and a few campaigns as well, which is cool. If you're in online PvP specifically, the difficulty of your skill or your opponents will be dependent on something called your ELO, which ranges from 500 as a newbie to about 2400 as a master, although very few people get that high, with the average long-time active player being around, I think, a thousand. This ranking, again, is based on your individual skill and win rate. A side note, but at standard and moderate AI level difficulties, you don't need to employ too much strategy to play this game or even use macros or hotkeys. A lot of the footage you'll see here is just me clicking around, but at higher levels and especially against other human players, you'll want to learn how to do some of the various builds and rushes to even the odds. I use Scout into Night Rush a lot because I like the speed of it, but I'm also a filthy casual and a noob. There are plenty of online guides and tutorials explaining and demonstrating how to do these. Don't worry, I'm not good at them either. I only recently started even trying to learn these because I've been a casual basically since I started playing. But for new players, before you even think about touching PvP at all, I recommend doing the William Wallace tutorial campaign as well as some of the scenarios, which many of them have have been in the game since 1999, and the William Wallace one in particular is how I learned to play the game all those years ago, at least at a basic level. It does a great job of introducing you to most of the game's mechanics from gathering resources to upgrades and fighting, and also is a cool interactive history of the figure, kind of, as most of the campaigns are. However, if you prefer to simply jump into a skirmish on standard difficulty, then a common beginner-friendly faction that I can recommend because it's the one I use the most are the Franks, based mostly on Carolingian and medieval France, who start out with a variety of bonuses to include an increase in foraging speed, an early form of gathering food, one of your vital resources, alongside wood, stone, and gold, as well as free farm upgrades, which is huge not only just for every Civ, but for Civs who push cavalry like the Franks do. The footage you see in the background is from the late half of the hardest AI setting game I played against the Korean AI. Given the Frankish Cav have extra hit points, more line of sight, and faster stables, they generally pump out knights like crazy, which is a classic Castle Age strategy, but experienced players will be able to, of course, counter this quite easily. Still, this could probably beat a lot of newer players. Franks also have a unique axe throwing unit if you choose to invest in them, which excel at fighting infantry of all kinds, particularly spears, which you'll want to keep away from your cavalry, meaning Franks can be a threat to most units on the field, even with just these two units. Now, I realize that as I've just explained all this, it won't really mean anything to a lot of you if you're a new player and if you're an experienced one, well, I left a, a ton of stuff out. But to put it in layman's terms, Franks are good, I think, because the bonuses they get to their faction will mostly be available whether a new player knowingly engages with them or not. 
Some factions excel at certain research bonuses, some at certain infantry and other tech, but those generally require players to knowingly engage with those systems. Food and farms are something almost every player will need, regardless of skill level, and these bonuses make the Franks a relatively straightforward to use civilization from the early to the late game. I am told they are also good in multiplayer, although personally I'm a single player kind of guy so I can't speak much on it. I just play the campaign and against the AI and that's plenty enough for me. Other good picks I'd recommend for a newbie would include the Celts, who are the tutorial civ by the way, so they are obviously beginner friendly, and the Goths. Both of these are infantry civs, but the Goths in particular have a castle age unit known as the Huskarl, which are absolute walls against enemy archers, and you can basically just spam them. Unless you're facing a faction with like a hard infantry counter, then you'll get wrecked like I did in this clip against the Slavs. Now you may have noticed me saying earlier in this video, the early to late game. And when I'm saying this, I'm talking about the game's age mechanic. Ages are what you use to progress to unlock new buildings, technology, and avenues to play. Games almost always start in the Dark Age, where players will be incredibly limited on what they can build economically and produce militarily. This is the age where you're mostly building some houses, gathering food, cutting wood, and making farms. I won't explain everything like this, by the way. I recommend doing the tutorial again for that and then watching some videos if you want to employ more advanced build strategies. However, the gathering of resources is fairly straightforward if you've ever played of RTS or even just like a survival game. You make villagers to farm a variety of resources and their associated buildings to gather them quicker, like a mining camp for stone and gold, a mill or dock for food, and a woodcutter camp for wood. Some factions don't need those things, like the Georgians get this nice mule cart that acts as a wood and mining camp, but a beginner doesn't need to know that. And you can also use your town center for resource gathering, which would be nice when you go multiple TCs in a longer game. After meeting the requirements for research, be it for a troop or better productivity, you can unlock it. As for ages, you do the same thing and you do this at your town center. But most buildings outside of houses and towers have upgrades within them of some kind. So it might be a good idea to just put the game on standard and then read through these so you have a better understanding of what they do. The subsequent ages after dark are feudal, castle, and finally the imperial age, although many stronger civs can and will end the game in the castle age. Your ability to advance quickly and efficiently will depend on your skill and your familiarity with your sieve, as some sieves start out strong and then peter out, while others take a while to get moving before becoming basically giant walls. There's a lot more that goes into each game, such as building houses for your population limit, unless you're playing a faction which doesn't need them, managing your troop spread, researching upgrades, trading, and generally setting up your city layout for the best defense or offense, but those are things that come with time and experience. Resources in your proximity to them and the enemy will be dependent on what map you're playing on. Maps can be selected either at will or random, like civilizations, although in online PvP the map Arabia, from what I can tell, is the most common and the one the current meta is based on. Most games revolve around the standard conquest of the other team, usually by wiping them out economically to the point they can't recover. Games can range anywhere from about 30 minutes to several hours, depending depending on what's going on, although some have taken much longer at the highly competitive levels. For example, this is the disconnect screen for what was over, I believe, a 97 hour real world game. I say real world because the in-game timer is set to 1.7 times speed. When it tells you you've played for an hour and a half, just keep in mind it was probably closer to 40 minutes, which I think is a good sweet spot for me to play a quick game before work against the AI, which at higher levels is plenty aggressive and sweaty enough for me as a not very good veteran of two decades. However, I can consistently beat the AI on hardest as the Franks, so I suppose I'm okay. But despite that fact, AI fights and campaigns have clearly been more than enough to keep me entertained for all these years. Now maybe as an outside observer, this might not sound like something that could sustain you for more than a few dozen hours, but there's something unmistakably magical about loading up a game, even if it's just against the AI, starting from nothing with a couple villagers and growing into a medieval juggernaut. Blasting down your enemy castles with cannons or trebuchets, watching your line of knights charge into the fray while your ranged units rain down hell on your poor foes, or just listening to the beautiful sound bites, the clash of steel, the horn that sounds an incoming attack, the chant of a priest converting an enemy unit, the death of a farm, the action, the tension, the triumphs, and the bitter defeats, it's all so wonderfully honed, like a blade you could say, that when you play it, especially in this newest iteration, the quality will likely overwhelm you. The possibility of those 45 sieves is itself a prospect worth at least a run for each. And the loop of this game, I think, with those is something indescribably magical. This is to say nothing for its music, which remains some of my favorite in any game, even in its newest iteration, although I miss the main menu music. But overall, it's just, it's a perfect game. And truly, you need look no further than those Steam numbers, the multiplayer community, the modders, yes, the game has mods, the tournaments, the forum posts, or the active DLC schedule to see that this game is still loved, and actively so, even after a quarter of a century. I have wanted to make a video for this game since I started casually doing YouTube back in 2021, which probably would have been a mistake. Now that I've gained some experience and a wonderful audience, if I do say so myself, I hope for whatever it's worth, I did this game a fraction of justice. This is one of the most important games that has and will ever be released for me. And if even one person watching this who hasn't played it before takes the time to try it and falls in love with it, then I know that this will have been worth it. Because Age of Empires 2 is not something temporary. It's forever. It's something that stays with you, even after hundreds of hours or years playing it. 
It lingers like summer's long past as a reminder of the good things in the world, the joys of youth and the possibility to relive it, that indescribable wonder you once felt made reality for a beautiful moment. This game, these moments are what the medium of gaming was all about, and nothing since has quite replicated that feeling for me as Age of Empires 2 does. And that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's something different than what I normally make, but I recently bought Age of Empires 2, the definitive edition on Steam sale. Normally I was just playing the HD or even the old disc version, but I've absolutely loved my time with it. And I thought, you know, it's about time I made a video for this game and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to see more Age of Empires 2 stuff, just let me know. Maybe I'll consider it. I'm not very good at the game, but I could probably make something with it. But that's going to be it for me. I'm Soul. This has been Age of Empires 2, and I will happily see you in the next one.